Could turn out for Oklahoma State once again, which is about an hour away from here. Up by 35, Oklahoma City about an hour southwest of Stillwater. Cowgirls winners of the Stillwater Regionals and Super Regionals. And again here for the second consecutive World Series. Allison Fiebre, the first baseman, the Georgia transfer. Going to play against her old team to kick off this World Series. It's kind of all waiting for an Oklahoma State starting pitcher. We thought it was going to be <laughs> Carrie Amberley. She took her time. And you know what, Carrie, take your time. Whatever you need to do to get ready, because Carrie Eberly, when she is in the circle, has been flat out dominant with that one great pitch. Yeah, it's her drop ball, it's her bread and butter pitch. She stands at about six foot tall, really long levers with her arms and legs. But Kevin, that drop ball is the pitch that she will go to about 95% of the time. She'll throw that drop ball to Kevin on both sides of the plate to where it doesn't matter if there's a lefty or a righty in the box, she's comfortable. Major down movement, heavy, heavy drop ball. One of the best drop balls, if not the best drop ball in Division I college softball. It is her go-to pitch, and she beats her infield a ton of ground balls. Everly has been aces in the postseason. Four starts, four complete games, 4-0, 134 ERA. Started in one games, one and three against Texas. Cowgirls were pushed to the limit but one in the decisive third game on a couple of fifth inning runs. Two nothing the final score. And the fans from down the road in Stillwater ready to get loud as Oklahoma State and Georgia begin game two here at the World Series. And a first pitch ground ball as if you expected anything else. <laughs> Savannah Sykes, and that one is foul, fielded in foul territory by Sidney Pennington. Local time 2.22 for our first pitch of game two. Leah Bowen Duame, our plate umpire in game two. Don Brown, Scott Tomlinson, and Jim Bertuzzi from first to third, respectively. The junior Savannah Sykes, third year starter. And a ball and a strike to her as Everly misses up at 71. Another looked like a pretty close up. It did, yeah. And that's another thing, too, about her drop ball and why I call it a heavy drop ball. Not only does it have that heavy down movement, but she throws hard, too. 69, 70, 71 miles an hour. 1-1 one, one to Sykes, the junior from Douglasville, Georgia. And that's a strike. 3 for 12 in the NCAA tournament, but a 526 on base percentage. Four walks hit by three pitches. And despite a comparatively low average, that's why she leads off. Gets on base a whole lot. A ground ball to Fiebre at first. She boots it. She did not have possession, though she was standing on the base. And a hard hit ground ball results and a Georgia runner to lead off the game. She made a great play. Got her glove to a line drive that one hopped her. And then her foot kicked it. She's kind of bobbling it in her first base glove as she attempted to go touch first base, but kicked it away. I think he's maybe going to ask if she got the out before she kicked it was an E3, and it's a pretty quick conversation between Kenny and Don. It didn't look like there was possession when no. she had the ball on the base. It's her right foot that ends up kicking the ball right there. Just rushing a little bit too much because she had a lot of time. One of the better fielding teams in the country, Oklahoma State, but an error against Freebury to start, and now Sydney Kuma. One of the big bats in this Georgia lineup with a screaming foul ball off of the 71. Kuma out of Fresno, California, all the way to Athens, GA. Only dog to start all 56 games this season now. Leads the team in hits, home runs, RBIs.
Georgia team that went just 7-17 seven and 17 in the SEC this season. Kuma part of the SEC all-newcomer team, but you look up and down this lineup and there are just not many conference accolades for individual players. A ground ball to third. Pennington gets one. And Petty gets two. The Fibri error erased as the ground ball specialist Eberly gets the grounder and her defense does the work. It's the best part of having a ground ball pitcher in the circle is that when you have a force at second base, you know as an infielder, you always have a chance to make a double play. Pennington to Petty to Fibri with the stretch. Again, more emotion that we're seeing early in this tournament. Fourth ground ball double play induced by Oklahoma State here in the NCAA tournament. And the 15th they've induced this year. Lacey Fincher with two down. And a big hack by Fincher and strike one. Georgia's best hitter. 5-11 on base percentage, 737 slugging, and 15 home runs out of a very, very, very small town in Alabama. Tanner Williams, Alabama. Not a ton of experience in this Georgia lineup, but this is one of their most experienced and biggest bats. Six for 15, couple of home runs, three walks here in the NCAA tournament. Everly's 2-1 is grounded foul. As Lou Harris Champer, 21 years at Georgia, 25 overall, and a whole lot of NCAA tournaments. A couple of years at Nickel State Southern Miss before taking over this program. He's been their head coach 21 of Georgia's 25 seasons. Everly gets Fincher swinging through an off speed pitch. Whole lot of heavy stuff low, and she'll face the minimum in a scoreless first. Just another variation of the same drop ball that we've been talking about the entire top half of the first 61 miles an hour. It's a 10 mile an hour drop. Scoreless time of the first here in Oklahoma City. Been fun to spend a few days here. Going to be fun to spend a whole lot more. Capital One starting lineups. Oklahoma State Cowgirls, All-Americans in the three and four spots in Febri and Busby. The freshman Hobson batting eight. They have a game-winning hit in game three of the Supers. And Kylie Naomi, a player their coach compares to Bo Jackson. First team All-Big 12 shortstop will lead it off. Very good lineup. One of the best in the country for Oklahoma State. Gonna have their hands full though because Mary Wilson Avan has done it all and then some in the circle for Georgia this postseason. Yeah, when Mary Wilson Avan is on, she can be anybody in the country, a 2.69 ERA, but when she is throwing her best, I would say her ERA is about 1.0, sub one, she can be that good. Through all 14 innings of the Super Regionals, did not give up a run to Florida. Back-to-back -back shutouts to send the Bulldogs through Gainesville to Oklahoma City. And after a 12-pitch first carry, Everly will watch at what has the makeup of a potential pitcher's duel. The way these two have thrown it this postseason this year. Oh, two for Naomi. Kylie Naomi, eight for 17 in the NCAA tournament. Three home runs. It's been on base more than half the time. Two. And Avan with a statement to start. 
Good she morning, can, good afternoon, good night. Yeah. <laughs> and she can throw a little bit of everything. She can work a screwball inside to right-handed hitters and away from lefties. She can move the ball up like that last strike, strikeout that we saw with her rise ball. Her changeup sets up everything else. It's a pitch that she told us has been feeling really good at the end of the year. And she can also work down the zone with her drop ball. That was a very nicely put together piece right there. It's beautiful. Strike to Cheyenne Factor. Avan extremely confident coming into this World Series. Graduate student from Macon, Georgia. Told us she loves the way her changeup's been going. Loved the way that her drop ball's been working better than it had been in a while. Everything was working against Florida last weekend. Said it was like a dream to do what she did. One a two for a Cheyenne Factor now, number two hitter. Yeah, she said she woke up on Sunday and she just still couldn't believe it, that they beat Florida twice, she shut them out twice, and that this team was gonna be going the Women's College World Series because look, the regular season didn't end pretty for Georgia. We're not just saying that because we're making up some stats. They ended the season on a, a seven game losing streak. Factor pops it up. Sydney Kuba there from second, two down. And it lost, what, 10 of their last 11 games on top of that? So not a ton of momentum, but a team that never wavered and the belief and their preparation and their coach in each other, and they got them here. And they'd lost 17 to one to that same Florida team earlier in the year. Here is the former Georgia Bulldog, Allison Fiebre. Playing against her old team, Fever takes ball one. Three years at the University of Georgia. A native of golf cart capital in the world, Peachtree City, Georgia. Just celebrated her birthday, actually, two days ago. And we asked about Georgia, and she said, no hard feelings. My birthday was two days ago, and Coach Lou was like the fourth person to text me. Yes. So love the years she spent at Georgia, actually played in the World Series for UGA three years ago, but has enhanced her career in two seasons in Stillwater. On a 2-0, Fabry belts one. That will be cut off in front of the wall by Kearney, and it's a single for Allison Fabry, who's just got one of the prettiest swings in college softball. She does. And she's a hitter, when she gets a 2-0 count, a hitter's count, she's gonna be prepared, she's gonna be looking for one side of the plate and to get on time with one speed, and that's exactly what she did. Drop ball, it hung up a little bit, and she barrels it up, hits it hard to right center field. Her ninth hit of the NCAA tournament, only her third single. Now Haley Busby, who is the Cowgirls' power leader. One home run ahead of Fibri. And also an All-American, a third-team selection. Another one of those impact transfers out of the University of Virginia. Foul ball to the face mask, one and one. Leah Bowen Duami, our plate umpire. I've never experienced that as an umpire or a catcher, but I just can't imagine that it's fun. You don't uh, think after the uh, roller coaster ride on the ump cam there, you'd like to experience that? <laughs> no, I've only gotten hit with a line drive uh, in my forehead in the pitcher circle with no mask, so there's also that experienced in a different way, so I guess. Also doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> Did you wear a mask after that? No. Gamer. Avan to Busby. Bob. Two and one. Haley Busby's had a great NCAA tournament. Had a great season. One home run shy of the Oklahoma State record.
On a 3-1 count, Busby pops it up. And Sykes will not have a play. Samantha Shaw is the Oklahoma State single season record of 20 two years ago, last time the Cowgirls made the World Series. Busby can tie that with a long ball here in OKC. Fibri on the move, and a 3-2 pitch popped up to first. Fincher will make the play with a second baseman, Kuma, beelining behind her. Scoreless first for Eberly, answered by Avent. Georgia Bats came alive in the postseason. 11 home runs in five games between the Regionals and the Supers. Gave up just one. Turned a seven-game losing streak into a five-game win streak. Scored 10 runs to beat Duke and win the Athens Regional. For more on the dogs, let's check in with Jalen. Thanks, Kevin. Georgia is trying to make this the year of the unseeded teams. We saw what JMU did with Oklahoma a few minutes ago, and this is the charm that the Georgia team has been wearing on their cleats since the beginning of the postseason. It's an Oklahoma charm. Just to remind themselves what the goal of this season was, to get here and to be ready to play in this World Series. They were also saying that even during that seven-game losing streak, Lacey Fincher was telling me it wasn't about getting down on ourselves or getting mad at each other. It was about learning from each loss and getting them here. Well, Jalen, uh, Amanda and I have also been wearing Oklahoma charms all season. That's the only reason we've made it. There's the charm. I didn't get one. Well, you're clearly more skilled than us. Because you found your way. The only way to get into the stadium is with a charm. Oh, I'm special. Security, please. Uh, by the way, Britton Rogers' mother, we're told, got them the Oklahoma charms. Britton Rogers, pitcher on the staff for Georgia, and her mom, Courtney Blades Rogers, top five at strikeouts wins in her career in NCAA history. So, Courtney lived a charmed career and has passed it on to her daughter and company. A ground ball is second from Sarah Mosley. Starts the second inning for Carrie Eberly. I think it would be cool, though, Kevin, if we had, like, you know those old best friend necklaces? If, like, you had one half of the Oklahoma and I had the other half, and, like, together it made the state of Oklahoma? You think I don't so? know. It's just an idea. Is that because you're saying we're best friends or just <laughs> for the Oklahoma bit? Oklahoma bit. Okay. <laughs> but we're also yeah, best I'm, friends. Well, I'm glad we've established <laughs> that friendship on air now. <laughs> Here's Kearney and another ground ball to second base. And another play made by Petty. This one just in time to sweep away Kearney. Two unseeded teams in this tournament. First time in nine years and eight World Series. We've had an unseeded team here at the Women's College World Series. Last one's to do it, South Florida LSU. LSU, by the way, featured Rachel Fico on that team, who is now the pitching coach at Georgia. It's Sidney Chandler who takes a strike. And I was thinking Georgia had to have been inspired with seeing JMU beat Oklahoma in the first game, thinking they're unseated, we're unseated, we could do it too. And the same breath, Oklahoma State had to have been like, okay, wake up call. Oklahoma just lost. They're the one seed. We can't let that same thing happen to us. We got to play our game. In a sense, you could see psychologically how each coach would say this is a best case kind of result for us. Yeah, it's true. Anything that Coach Lou and Kenny G can do to inspire their teams. Two strikes on the freshman Chambly. Lone left-handed bat in the Georgia lineup. Ball. Sidney Chambly won a home run, but an SEC leading six triples on the year. SEC all-newcomer team. Actually missing it, did you there? She has 11 home runs, Sidney Chambly. I'm shortchanging her. I'm sorry, Sid. A lot of extra base power in her back. Freshman from Dallas, Georgia, about two hours west of Athens.
I think that's one of the things that sticks out about George's lineup and about their offense is that they just don't rely on one player to come through, not even two players. It's truly a lineup one through nine that has had their big moments this season. 13th in the country, home runs per game. A couple with 15, one with 11, a whole bunch of players with six or seven. Ball. On a 2-2, Chambly takes ball three. Well, and you know that the Georgia offense is always going to have a plan of attack. They're always going to be prepared for the pitcher that they're facing. They prepare, you know, top 5%, top 1% in the country with being able to come up with that approach and stick with that plan throughout the game. Chambly strokes one foul, still three and two. Something that came up a lot in our conversations with Georgia players, and frankly, it came up earlier in the year when we talked to Allison Febri, former Georgia player, about all the hours she spent breaking down her swing in Athens. Tony Baldwin, the great hitting coach in his seventh year there. Eight pitch to Chambly. Ball. And there will be no ninth. Preparation pays off for Sid with a two out walk. So two down for Jaden Fields, who has been one of Georgia's most explosive bats in the postseason. Basically didn't play for three weeks and went four for six against Florida. A couple of home runs and a walk in that series. Five for seven total here in the NCAA tournament. Heck of an athletic family, Jaden Fields, sister of Justin, former Georgia and Ohio State quarterback, new Bears QB. And has really grown in her three years in Athens. A ground ball to short, scooped up by Naomi. Boy, does she have a cannon. Three outs all on the ground for Eberly in a scoreless second. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series, presented by Capital One. Welcome back to Hall of Fame Stadium. Kevin Brown, Amanda Scarborough, are we on camera yet? Oh, there we are, look at this long zoom in. I was confused for a second. Hi, everybody. Well, uh, first game today, still kind of shocked by what we saw. James Madison beating Oklahoma, an amazing pitching performance from Odyssey Alexander. We've got a chance to see two great pitchers again in this one. Yeah, I think between Eberly and Avant, two super seniors who got that fifth year, got the extra year to come out and live their dream, play the game that they love. And we saw the first thing in game one with Odyssey Alexander going up against Shannon Sale. Four starters, four fifth-year players. NCAA did what seems like an obvious thing in hindsight, but certainly the right thing, granting spring sport players that extra year of eligibility after the COVID-19 shutdown a year ago. A ground ball from Sydney Pennington to third. And a ground out to start the bottom of the second for Mary Wilson Avent. Like a lot of these fifth year players, Mary Wilson Avent has plans for her postgraduate life. Already has a job lined up after her master's in marketing research. But She's going to push that start day back a little bit, hoping to take her team deep into the World Series here in Oklahoma City, Georgia's fifth trip in history. Yeah, she actually found out that and accepted that job whenever they were at the SEC headquarters in Birmingham. They were on their bus traveling to a road series diverted with some bad weather tornadoes were in the area thunderstorms and ended up going to the SEC headquarters and that's where she said she actually accepted her job 
Greg Sinke came and hung out with him there too. That's awesome. Georgia's had a couple of travel snafus this year. They got a flat tire on the way to Gainesville last weekend, and they have made the most of it. Young, resilient bunch. Only one of two SEC teams here at the World Series. And I think about how shocking that would have been to hear a couple of weeks ago. Two SEC teams. Not a huge shocker, though you thought it might be more. Alabama, not a surprise, but Georgia, 11th place out of 13 in the SEC. 3-1-2, Carly Petty, what to first caught. Lacey Fincher with a wicked quick reaction at first base. We've seen more hard hit balls in this game than we did, I think, in our entire first game. Lacey Fincher playing the hot corner. She used to be a shortstop growing up in high school, had played everywhere except first base before she got to Georgia. Learn that position, grabs that back in. Reagan Wright takes a strike. Four years at the University of Texas, Arlington. The first year and final year at Oklahoma State. Three for 12 on three hits, extra bases in this NCAA tournament. It's also walked twice, been hit by a pitch, so getting on base, hitting for power. seniors Reagan Wright on this Oklahoma State team five graduate seniors only four freshmen and Wright pops it up Ellie Armistead the shortstop makes the play Avant and Eberly cruising along through two City just down the road from the OKC Zoo. Yeah, check that out. Maybe tomorrow morning before our games. Six local. What do you think? Trip to the zoo Friday morning? Yeah, I'm in. All right. We, we brought the uh, World Series trophy of the zoo as well. <laughs> this is an animal I'm told is named Dodger. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. What is this? Is it a bobcat? We're being yes. told it's a bobcat. How about the tail? Dodger, no interest in the trophy. Big fan of the tennis ball. Great vertical leap for Dodger. He'd be a first round pick of the NBA draft next year. Peyton Bordeaux, ground ball to third. One pitch, one out. Carrie Eberly in the third. She is chewing up outs quickly. In the NCAA tournament for this year, that's her 48th ground ball out compared to just 13 fly ball outs. And 6 to 0 in that category today. Number nine hitter, Ellie Armistead. I mean, just so different than the two pitchers that we saw earlier today with Sale and Alexander. Both of those pitchers loving to live more up in the zone, and Eberly is going to be all down. Working on the freshman shortstop. Oh. Now the Armistead took over the job early in the SEC season against Ole Miss. Sidney Kuma had been playing a lot of short. Armistead so smooth defensively. Her first year, Matthews, Virginia. Well. He's lost the plot here, 3-0 and oh, to the nine-hitter Armistead.
Three and one. Armistead just 10 walks on a year. And she won't walk here. Busby in right field. NBA playoffs tomorrow night. Maybe the Clippers can sign Dodger. See if he can stop Luka Doncic, who had 42 last night. Mavs took a 3-2 lead on L.A. Try to close out this first round series. Game six tomorrow. NBA countdown presented by Mountain Dew. 8 Eastern, 7 Central. The game follows. Five games in that series, all won by the road team. Second time in NBA postseason history that that has happened. <laughs> we got Mavs Clippers. Mavs, Texas girl. Really? Yeah, but you're a, I thought you were a Rockets fan. Yeah, I am, but I mean, I'm going to go for a Texas team. You think all Yankees fans go for the Mets just because they're a New York team? <laughs> no, I don't. All right. <laughs> you asked me to pick. I mean, I would pick none because, you know, my Rockets are. Oh. So you see that pitch right here, this outside drop ball to a right-handed hitter. It has a little bit of curve to it, but when we talk to Eberly, it doesn't, she's not trying to throw a curve, but it's because of the fact that look at where she steps slightly across her body. You see where her left foot strided out? And so it causes it to have that curve, but she's not trying to make that happen. It's just when she strides out, there's a tendency to step across her body. She'll start in the middle and then step across on that line. And you can just tell by looking at where her right foot starts on the pitching plate. Her right foot starts in the dead center of the pitching plate. And then when she strides out, she crosses her body. It gives that drop ball a slight curve to it. I also think, too, when she throws that drop ball she'll, in the inside corner, she'll step in the same spot. It'll hide that pitch a little bit from her righty. Ball. That release and, uh, and that step through, how, how similar is that to other right-handers? It, it's very unique for her. Usually you'll, you'll try to step more straight. It's not very often that you'll see a pitcher constantly step across, across, across their body. But no matter what, she told us, you know, if I try to throw it in or out, I'm going to go to that same spot. Ball. Has worked brilliantly in her career at pitch. ACC Pitcher of the Year two years ago at Virginia Tech. And the Big 12 Pitcher of the Year this year at Oklahoma State. Second team All-American, Eberly, after a ground out and a fly out, trying to get rid of Sykes. On the ground is short. Would you look at that? Another ground ball out for Kerry Eberly. Nine outs recorded, seven on the ground, and three no-hit innings. We are playing softball in February here in Clearwater. The amount of great matchups that we have, great teams here, unparalleled. We have some of the best talent in the country. The best ticket, the hardest ticket to get in town. If you are a softball fan, this is a place that you want to be. Back at the beach, better than ever, for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, which will return next year, February 2022. Going to be some amazing softball there. Going to be another fantastic field of teams, an event we really missed this year. Kind of feels like um, a miniature World Series in February, yeah. but by the beach instead of in Oklahoma. <laughs> You're saying you wish there was a beach in Oklahoma? <laughs> Don't we I'm all. trying to get you in trouble with everybody right now. I know, Wizards right? fans, people <laughs> of Texas. <laughs> Hall of Fame Stadium here in Oklahoma City. Another phenomenal crowd. First year of the added capacity of the upper deck. The stadium's undergone so many improvements over the years. I know you've been here for a long time. I was talking to, to Jenny Dalton Hill earlier, who's on our pre-game, post-game, between-game set. And Jenny said, this is unrecognizable. Nothing here looks the same from when she was playing here, winning national titles in the 90s. Avery Hobson, number eight hitter, down 0 2. And Hobson will reach on a ground ball that takes off the glove of the shortstop, Armistead. A leadoff infield single for Avery Hobson.
Hawks are just able to hit the ball hard and use the ground and be able to find a hole there between shortstop and third base. Good effort by Armistead, but even if she would have been able to field that cleanly, it would have been a hit for Hobson because of how far Armistead would have had to go. Another base hit for Hobson on the game winner Saturday, or Sunday, beg your pardon, against Texas. Moved into the lineup for postseason play. Replacing Michelle Richburg, who has since been ruled out with an injury, a change that Kenny Gajewski was kind of hesitant about making. Didn't want it to seem like an overreaction. Went to his seniors and he said, you know, will this look like I'm looking for a spark here or will it look like an overreaction to our loss of the postseason? And his team basically said, no, we, we want to see Hobson in there. Yeah, just he's a coach that just has this open communication, open dialogue with his players. And I feel like it's made such a difference for them this year, even going back to the beginning. Chelsea Alexander pops up a butt. Look out. The third baseman Sykes nearly full on into the catcher Bordeaux, but she squeezes out number one. It's one of the strengths of Mary Wilson Avian is that she has a lot of different looks. She can go up in the zone when she needs to. So a bunt situation, she's able to throw her rise ball. Alexander pops it up and she's able to get it out instead of the runner advancing to second base. It's just, she can throw situationally. She believes in all of her pitches, be able to throw them in any count. Kylie Naomi. Oh. Takes ball one. And that's actually something that she told me earlier on in the year that in the fall, she really wanted to come back into her fifth year to be super consistent, to be reliable, and to actually work against their own hitters throwing live to be able to play with combinations of pitches and setups and things that she hadn't done in the past that she wanted to bring. Naomi with a drive to left field. This is going to hang in the park. Chambly at the warning track's edge will put it away. It's a good swing. But a couple more of those things down what she worked on the fall, being able to throw a change up in any count is a big focus that she wanted to have. And then also being able to throw her rise ball in any count and have a lot of confidence in that pitch. And she's owned both of those pitches this year. Two down for Cheyenne Factor. Is that where you've seen with Avant the most growth in her variety of pitches, her ability to change pitches? Yeah, and she's always had the variety, but they haven't been effective in every count that she's needed them to be effective, where maybe it's a curveball on a 2-0 count and she throws it too far outside. She's able to pinpoint, locate all of those pitches now. Junior from Yukon, Oklahoma, Cheyenne Factor. Started every game in center field this year. Second team, all Big 12 player. Ball. Infield single start of the inning from Hobson. She's been anchored to first since. And she was off and running on that pitch, which was fouled away. Jalen? Hey, guys. After the Big 12 tournament, uh, Coach Kajewski said some of his teammates, his, his team came up to him and said, we want to do a retreat. We want to do a trip. We want to go somewhere to help our team chemistry and communication. And so they got a cabin and all stayed there for, I think he said, two days and swam in the pool and played games. And they watched the selection show there, too. And they said that it really helped their communication and really helped their cohesiveness as a team to come into this World Series. And he said the players came to him, said, we want to do this. And he said, OK, but I'm picking the roommate assignments and I'm picking the traveling assignments. Change it up a little bit. Like they really forged some relationships. Factor cracks one to center field. Kearney at the wall. And gone. Cheyenne Factor with a two strike, two out, two run home run. And the Cowgirls jump in front of the third.
for a two strike pitch. This one just isn't up enough factor anticipating a rise ball was going to be up in the zone and she perils it up Kearney what a reach that, that was a lot closer to her glove than I thought it was going to be when she jumped up but number nine Cheyenne factor getting Oklahoma State on the board first her first home run her first RBIs of the NCAA tournament Woo! and that is about as much emotion as you will see Cheyenne factor show just a little fist pump a little smile a quiet leader who has blasted the 93rd home run for Oklahoma State. That snaps, by the way, a 26-inning scoreless streak for Mary Wilson Avan. Showed you that 23-plus number off the top. And it is Oklahoma State to strike first on the factor home run. You know, when you think about Oklahoma State as a team, I mean, their offense can be explosive over 90 home runs. They have a solid one-two pitching punch with Eberly and Maxwell, and Maxwell is a lefty. They play solid defense. I mean, this Oklahoma State team is pretty complete. A couple of losses this year that stand out on their schedule, lost to Kansas City in the non-conference, among others, because their defense had a few games of three-plus errors. But by and large, they've been consistent basically every phase. One of now three teams to beat Oklahoma. Ran through the Big 12, won 15 games in a row. Record conference win streak for them. And they've gone 5-1 and one in the NCAA tournament. Fibri takes one out to second. The inning ends, but not before Cheyenne Factor strikes the first blow. This is all the scoring that we're gonna see just only off the home runs in Oklahoma City. Cheyenne Factor with the bomb. What a beautiful swing on a one-two pitch, and she got a chain. I think we need to find out what that chain is called. Welcome back. I'm here with Coach Lou. Coach, what are you seeing from your pitcher, Mary Wilson, in the circle that you like so far? What I like about Mary is when she spins it and when she uses her off speed. Her off speed is beautiful, and I honestly just love the way that she pitches. She has the ability to go in all directions with the ball. What does it mean to have a leader and a veteran in the circle when you have such a young lineup? It means the world, you know. Mary is one of those pitchers that's out there just for the team, you know. There's zero ego. She wants to go out there and compete and do what she can to help the team be successful. What do you want to see against Everly adjustments from your bats? Yeah, we've been able to be through the lineup one time now, and now we're just going to ease up and let her supply the power and uh, have Mary's back and get some hits. All right, thank you, Coach. All Good right, luck. thanks. 21st year at Georgia, Lou Harris Champer told us that she loves this team, she loves everything about them, she loves how they continue to believe in each other despite seven straight losses heading into the NCAA tournament. So down two runs after three, well, it feels like no big thing for UGA. Two, three, four hitters coming up against Eberly here in the fourth, Sydney Kuma to start it. That's the one thing about having a power in your offense like Georgia does is that you never really feel too far out of game. 11 home runs in the NCAA tournament that they've hit to get here. The toughest part is to facing a drop ball pitcher who doesn't give up a ton of home runs because of the way that she keeps the ball down. Best way to adjust a, a drop ball pitcher the second time through, what would you say? Trying to get more of the bottom half of the ball. Obviously, they're hitting the top half of it and rolling over, which is easier said than done. We asked Carrie, actually, how do teams make adjustments against you? What do you see when they're trying to hit your drop ball? And she said, they'll move at all different parts of the box. They'll even try to get on top of the plate against me, but it doesn't really bother me. 
And also, you'll, you'll see them start to get a little bit more in their legs, too. Maybe adjust their posture, trying to get their barrel to the middle bottom half part of the ball. She told us, honestly, I don't mind that when people go up to the top of the box yeah. because of the way she can manipulate the pitch and where it crosses home plate. Yeah, she's like, I throw 70, so if you want to <laughs> cut some distance off, she's right. going to look faster. <laughs> Kuma up near the top now for a 1-2. And another ground ball foul. The Women's College World Series Championship Finals begin Monday, 7 Eastern, 6 Central on ESPN. Catch all the action in person with the World Series at 100% capacity. For tickets, visit ncaa.com slash WCWS. Official online home for all 90 championships. Another one, two to Kuma, and this one gets a swing and miss. A little bit up in the zone for Eberly, her second strikeout. Talk about 95% of the time she goes to her drop ball, but she also has a rise ball that she can mix in there that other 5, 10% of the time to keep these hitters guessing. What a nice location for that rise low through the zone. No hits allowed by Eberly today, just a walk against her. Lacey Fincher, and we're seeing a lot of those, a lot of balls being beaten into the ground, third base side. Strikeout. For Fincher, her first at bat, 141st start of her career. The Tanner Williams, Alabama native. And one of those players from a super small town was a six year varsity player in high school, Faith Academy, Alabama. You go to the Wikipedia page for Tanner Williams, Alabama, it, it barely exists. There are two lines in the whole page, an unincorporated community in Mobile County in Alabama. And she played for a team called the West Mobile Express for a while. One shot foul on a 2-2. Every morning that she is back home, she goes to a little restaurant that's connected to a gas station called Sidetrack. And she loved, whenever her pops was alive, to be able to, to go get breakfast with this crew of people. They talk about life lessons, life, pick on her brother Luke. But this is a really important part of Lacey Fincher's life, of being, as being a part of this community. And they love to follow her, and they love to follow the Georgia Bulldogs. This one popped into center field, long run for Factor, and she will not get there. Lacey Fincher, the first base hit of the game, and Jalen, she continues to make Tanner Williams proud. She does, and she actually told us that her dad had to go and install the ESPN app on a lot of people's phones at Sidetrack so that they would be able to watch her in postseason and watch her all, all season, and they asked her, will you please say you know, in your bio that you're from Tanner Williams because they wanted that to show up on her page and she did that for them because of all of the support that they have given her. So cool. So cool the pride she takes in her hometown and the folks there that she calls her second grandpas. Here's a ground ball to second for Mosley. Could be two again and it is. Penny Naomi Fibri. 4-6-3 and Eberly is out of the fourth. Double plays just never get old. Runner at first base again, force it to, you know that Oklahoma State's gonna be anticipating that double play. Definitely have the best nails. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. 
Let's check in downstairs now with Jalen. Thanks, Kevin. Coach Gajewski, you've had some good defense out there from your team. What are you seeing from them today? Yeah, I mean, I just feel good about the uh, way that they've come out and play. They seem to be in a good spot, and uh, Carrie's throwing the ball well, and she gets a lot of ground balls, and when we play catch, we have a chance, you know, to be really good. What is Carrie doing that's so effective to this lineup? Well, she's just done this all year, you know, and she's done it actually for the whole time, and she's just uh, competitive, that drop ball's tough, and uh, our, uh, like I said, uh, our game plan has been good up to this point. So. I think you need a little bit more energy like your girls it's behind nuts. you right yeah, here. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Uh, thanks to Kenny, thanks to Raquel Dominguez for providing the raucous energy behind him as well. I like the Kenny G for president sign there in the Stillwater cheering section. I don't know how many microphones we have here. I know we have 42 cameras, but uh, I think we only need one to catch Raquel in the third base dugout. Vocal crowd, vocal group. Oklahoma State trying to go to the winner's bracket. There's a fly ball on the right from Haley Busby. If you're just joining us for the day, the big story, James Madison. First ever NCAA tournament game with an extra inning win over number one seed Oklahoma. Four to three, eight inning game on an eighth inning home run from Kate Gordon. So the Dukes await the winner. Seven Eastern, six Central tomorrow night. That game will be on ESPN2. Cindy Pennington against Mary Wilson Aben. And Pennington fooled. Yeah, a couple of back to back change ups there, 54 miles an hour. Finds herself in an 0 2 count. That's actually what hurt her back in the bottom of the third inning. Both the hits that she gave up in that inning with the two runs came on a 1 and 2 count and an 0 and 2 count. What's your approach as a pitcher on one two? What are you thinking? I don't want it to be too much of a blatant ball like the pitch that she just threw. I want it to be a competitive pitch a little bit off the plate. Maybe a little bit up if you're more of a rise ball pitcher, but I just don't like the non-competitive 0-2, oh 1-2 and, two, one and two pitches that are just blatant balls that the hitter just doesn't even have to think about. Still one and two after a foul ball for Pennington. That was another non-competitive one, two and two. Yeah, changeup slipped out of her hand. I think that we're going to start to see that pitch a little bit more second time through the order as we continue through. Kylie Naomi really squared up a ball. It was a fly ball to left field, but she hit it hard. And then Factor after that hit that bomb. Pennington, Oklahoma State's all-time home run leader with 37. And a ground ball to third. Sykes picks the short hop. And that's one thing that has gotten better for Georgia has been their defense. Talked a lot about their offense and exploding and being able to shut out teams. But this is a Georgia defense that earlier in the season wasn't really reliable. But all together in the NCAA tournament, they've been playing some strong D. Carly Petty with two down. Oh, Oklahoma State's got a celebrity in the household. Men's basketball coach Mike Boynton. Saw Mike earlier this year during the Bedlam regular season series. Was actually in the dugout at the end of the win on Friday night of that series. He gave Kenny Gajewski a big hug after Oklahoma State broke a long losing streak to OU. Yeah, it was the first time as a head coach that Kenny Gajewski had beaten Oklahoma. Look the way that we've seen more and more cross-sport support, too. And this is the place to be. Where would you rather be right now than here? Besides the zoo, obviously, <laughs> hanging with Dodger. Petty goes down. A two-strike approach there for Avant and a one-two-three-fourth.
2-0 lead for Oklahoma State after four. Our umpiring crew gracious enough to be mic'd up and to wear a home plate camera. Can you feel that when you put it on? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Let's check it out. No. I was more worried about the camera. <laughs> We were more worried about you, Leah, but yes. thanks for being concerned about what is certainly an expensive piece of technology. Our ump cam graciously worn by Leah Bowen Duame behind the plate today. And doing a fine job with the strike zone. 2 nothing, Oklahoma State. Four innings gone, three to go. Game two of our quadruple header today. Coming up tonight, Alabama against Arizona. And then the last two national champions, UCLA, Florida State, right here on ESPN. Beth Mullins, Michelle Smith, Jess Mendoza, Holly Rowe, our night side crew. Should be a tremendous evening. Ball down. 2-0 for Jada Kearney. 5-6-7 for Georgia here in the fifth. Bulldogs have just one hit, one walk against Carrie Eberly. talking about approaches to a, a drop ball pitcher and getting low to get that ball. Kearney is about knee to the ground right now in her crouch. Well, yeah, she looks a little bit lower than what she normally does, huh? You like that as a pitcher? Is there some aspect of your mind that says, hey, hitters are really changing their approach to, to face me. Yeah, you'll definitely maybe notice it a little bit, but still have to be able to hit it. <laughs> oh, good adjustment. Look at you. It's the hardest hit ball that we've seen off of her. It is a leadoff single for Kearney. And everybody's going to get in that low crouch the way that Jada <laughs> Kearney just swung it. Yeah, she took some pitches within that at bat, was able to work the count, looked like she was seeing it good. And despite all of the dominance we've seen from Emberly, Georgia does have the tying run to the plate. Chambly, who's hit 11 home runs, two in the NCAA tournament. Chambly squares and butts it foul. Amazing sign of respect in a way for everybody. You got nine outs to go. You have the only lefty in the lineup, an 11 home run hitter, and yet Georgia, I guess, doesn't seem confident at all. They can elevate a ball, and they're going to have Chambly try to bunt. I think two trying to avoid another double play. It's been helpful for Oklahoma State in this game. They've just been unable, unable to get a runner to second base because they've turned two double plays. Pull back the bunt for what is ball two, and Reagan Wright will go out to the circle. Yeah, falling behind on both the hitters that she faced. Jada Kearney had that 3 1 hit. Now Chanley finds herself in a 2 1. Chambly will walk her first time. Swinging away on 2-1 and a foul tip, strike two. 
I know that was up in the zone, but I thought she was still trying to throw a drop ball, but she just threw 70 miles an hour right past Jambly. You think that's where she was trying to throw it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was trying to move her drop ball a little bit up to find the bottom of the zone, but I don't think she was trying to throw it there. Right back to Eberle. One off throw to second. And the base held by Petty. That could have been disaster for Oklahoma State. Yeah, this is all the second baseman Petty being able to help out Eberly, who just throws this ball right in the ground. You could tell she's not confident, tries to force it, but good footwork there by Petty to be able to still get the out. If I'm Georgia, I'm picking up on that. I'm thinking maybe we should try to lay down a bunt, bunt it right at Eberly. Try to put more pressure on her to make a play. So Chambly replaces Kearney one to four on the fielder's choice. Georgia hitless today with runners on base. 0 for four in these spots. Trying to get something going with Jaden Fields. Fields had that phenomenal game one against Oklahoma about a month ago when Georgia handed OU its first loss, went three for five. Remember the big play where she had a home run, did not step on home plate, was called out. And it looked like a run that might cost Georgia, but they rallied to tie it in the seventh, and then Fields had the walk-off hit in the ninth, went three for five. Facing the other half of Bedlam now. And that one hit her. So a single, and after a fielder's choice, he hit batter. And the dogs will bring the go-ahead run to the plate with one out. Yeah, Eberle's just lost her command in this inning. Falling behind in counts, throwing pitches that just aren't even close to the strike zone, and hit by batter, or hit by pitch. Devil! First time today, Georgia puts a runner to second. And the catcher, Payton Bordeaux, will bat. Well. I, mean, I feel like if you're Georgia, you have to take advantage of this inning. She's fallen behind in counts. The only tough thing is that she's just unpredictable right now with where the pitch is going to end up. She's being a little wild. One for the freshman. And again, Everly dots that outside corner. When she's feeling good, that's the spot that she can hit over and over and over again, right at the bottom of the knees, outside corner, righty. First time she's been ahead of a hitter all inning. And a ground ball off the glove of Fibri. It will go to right field. A late break for Chambly. She's coming home. She's out. She never touched the plate. Runners move up. Fields to third. Bordeaux to second. But Chambly never got her hand into home plate. Well, this is just a missed opportunity for Georgia to be able to score because of the fact that the ball bounces off of Fibri's glove and then just passed Petty. Chambly got to third base, but she stopped. She hesitated, and that small hesitation right there caused her to be out in a throw that was absolutely on the money with the tag by Wright. 
just a game of inches and that little hesitation or not picking up her base coach, Lua Harris Champer telling to send her bad miscommunication. Costing him a run. Could have been 2-1, second and third, one out. Instead, Eberly is an out away from ending the inning. It's the nine hitter, Ellie Armistead. Ball. It's a base hit for Bordeaux, a single. And then a 9-2 put out. Busby has not played a ton of right field this year with the dart to the catcher right. Could be the moment we look back on if Oklahoma State hangs on to win. A ground ball to shortstop. And the fifth inning for Carrie Everly is over. She immediately points to Busby in right field and shouts her appreciation. You have to have each other's back here on the field. It bounced off of Fievery to Busby. That throw was money. to the Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Cheyenne Factor's two-run home run, the decisive blow to date. Game two of the World Series after a James Madison stunner in game one, 4-3 over number one Oklahoma. Cindy Chambly, Georgia left fielder, thrown out at the plate for the second out in the top of the fifth. Bulldogs would leave two in scoring position. Oh and two, Mary Wilson Avant throwing to Reagan Wright. Bottom three hitters due up for the Cowgirls in the home fifth. Winner of this game will get James Madison, seven Eastern, six Central tomorrow. And the loser will play Oklahoma in an elimination game. Might be an angry Oklahoma team, you think? I think so, yeah. Wright couldn't hold up. And a third strikeout for Avant. So impressive with Odyssey Alexander being able to shut down that explosive Oklahoma offense. Been the number one team in the country all season long, basically, and the number one offense all season long. Thought the stars were maybe aligned for Bedlam in the winner's bracket, but <laughs> will not be the case. We'd only have Bedlam in an elimination game if Georgia came back to win. Avery Hobson singled and scored in the third. Ball. One and one here. Seventh consecutive start for her, only her 11th this season. Robson go ahead and hit in the fifth inning against Texas in the decisive game three. And she scored the go ahead run in game one of the World Series. Just 0 for 6 in Big 12 games, but Kenny Gajewski had his finger on the pulse of his team. Switch that looks better by the moment. That's a foul ball, 3 and 2. He's just always on the pulse of the team. Very aware. Again, he's going to be open to communication, pulling players, players into his office. Like, hey, let's talk this out. Hey, let's get it right. Nice 
Ground ball to Kuma, two down. Ask Kenny, what are you going to remember about this team? And he said, going to remember one of his opening weekends of the year when he had to bring in a few players and say, basically, what's going on? Conversation with some of his leaders, Sidney Pennington, Allison Febri, Carrie Eberly. Didn't feel like early on the team was as cohesive as it was last year. He brought him in a room. He said, we're going to work this out. You're going to listen to each other. I'll be the mediator, and we're not leaving this room until we figure out what's going on. And he said, ultimately, it was really a bunch of nothing. Here's a bunt from Alexander, and she is retired. This Oklahoma State team has built chemistry and cohesiveness all year. They're six outs away from a World Series Game 1 win. Earlier today in their first ever World Series game, the James Madison Dukes shocked the top-ranked team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners, the second unseeded team to beat a number one in the opening round. Oklahoma's third loss of the year, JMU, still with only two losses. The Dukes await the winner of this game tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, ESPN2. You've been calling this World Series now for a long time, Amanda. You've come here as a player. You have seen a whole lot of college softball here in OKC. <laughs> How do you put into perspective what we saw earlier today? It's so hard to because I don't know if there's ever been an upset that big on this field before. I'm not seeing every game. We'll tell you that, but just amazing what they were able to do. It just looked totally relaxed, poised, competitive, and fought the entire time. They never trailed in that game. Fans have stuck around. Purple people out of Harrisonburg, VA. Yeah, they're scouting their possible opponents. <laughs> right. That's what they're Why doing. Why not? <laughs> Might be a date with Carrie Eberly the way she's thrown. A 2-0 strike to Savannah Sykes, the Bulldogs' leadoff hitter. And now all the teams in the upper bracket have all beaten Oklahoma. They'll have three losses on the season, and it's been Oklahoma State, Georgia, and JMU. Isn't that crazy? Yes. Just amazing the way the brackets worked out again this year. Amazing at the bottom half that we have the last two national champions meeting in the first round of the World Series. Florida State, 2018 champs. UCLA, 2019. Going to play at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central or thereabouts. Yeah, lots of natties on the other side of the bracket. All the teams have them. Alabama, Arizona as well. A ground ball to second. Another ground ball out for Carrie Eberly. Savannah Sykes, 4-3 to begin the sixth. In news you probably would never notice unless we told you there's a new left fielder for Oklahoma State. Another Georgia transfer, Jordan Duggett, the other one on this roster, along with Febri. I mean, the way Everly pitches, it could be me, you, and a can of tomatoes in the outfield that might not necessarily matter. I mean, you're good. I don't know why I'm lumping you into this. <laughs> All-American twice. You're not a can of tomatoes. I apologize. No offense to the can of tomatoes. Woo! But to you, a little offense. Yeah, understandably so. You know, I was thinking about Jordan Doggett. You mentioned that she's a transfer from Georgia, just like Allison Fabry, her other teammate. But that's just such a big storyline with this Oklahoma State team. They've been able to bring in transfers that have become key components to their team. And even going back, coming to 2019, with Sam Shaw transferring from Texas A&M, and she led them to the Women's College World Series. Reason why they were here. Like in the era of college sports now where the transfer portal, especially in other sports, is so wide open. It's easy to think that you just grab a transfer and that person fits into your team right away. Kenny Gajewski has talked about that not being the case, as did Haley Busby when we talked to her yesterday, coming over from Virginia. 
mean, you obviously played on, on teams where players transferred in. How long does it take for them to get comfortable and for you to get comfortable? It's not so much about team chemistry and communication. You can have basically the same team from one year to the next, but if you bring in one or two new players, it still just never feels exactly the same. And that team chemistry is, is what helps you get through an entire season. There are so many meetings that go on behind closed doors that you have maybe with a couple of your teammates or with your seniors or with your entire team or with your coaches. There's so many meetings to be able to get on the same page and get things right. A ground ball sneaks through off the bat of Kuma as she beats the Virginia Tech transfer Eberly. And Lacey Fincher will represent the tying run with one out. Fourth hit for Georgia. They have all been singles. Georgia's slugging percentage leader with 15 home runs. Fincher trying to do something almost nobody's done today and elevate a ball against Eberly. Mentioned how she hung out with the, the crew at Sidetrack back at her hometown, and I, I thought, I asked her, what's the biggest lesson that you feel like they taught you? And she said, that there's never a wrong time to do the right thing. Something that she always lives by and that. Eberly is going to think about going to second. This time, just make it a little bit easier on herself. Get the out at first. Yeah, I feel like that has the potential to be a developing story here. Eberly just trying to be confident to make that throw to second. Kuma had good hustle to make her think twice about it. She gets the ball here. Didn't trust herself. Decided just to go the easy way for the sure out, knowing that she's up by two. Now Sarah Mosley. And we've seen pitchers come here and not be able to make that throw. It, this is not something that would be a complete rarity, but it's going to be up to a team possibly to exploit that against her. Why is that play so hard for a pitcher? Just go get in your head. It's just I'm not going to say that she has the yips, but it can be a case of the yips, like a Chuck Knobloch situation. To say, did not expect a Chuck Knobloch name drop <laughs> on day one of the World Series. Maybe day two. <laughs> Steve Sachs is very thankful he went with Knobloch there. <laughs> one one to Mosley. And strike two. So many big hits from Sarah Mosley this year. Game tying single forced extra innings against Oklahoma and the Bulldogs win earlier this year. Down in the count here against Eberly. What a great at bat by Mosley. Kevin, she took the pitch on a one and two count. That was a close pitch, a pitcher's pitch. This pitch right here, just off the plate. She had confidence to take it, to get this pitch, the very next pitch, when Epperly had to bring it more on the plate because she didn't get the call off the plate. And Mosley was able to work the right side, barrel it up, and get an RBI. And you can see there why the obstruction was signaled with Wright blocking the plate. So 2-1 for Jada Kearney as Georgia finally breaks through. And we finally get a run in the NCAA tournament that did not come on a home run. 
First nine runs in the two games. All on homers. Kearney one out of two. And a great swing last inning in that low crouch. And that was the first two out hit for Georgia in this game. And mind you, too, if Epperly would have gone to second with her throw, it would be a different story. Great point. Play it back. Be first and second instead of a run in. Kearney, a flat crown ball to second. Epperly gets out of the inning with the lead, but Georgia has shaved it in half. Naomi Factor Phoebe trying to up the 2-1 lead. The NCAA Women's College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? A two-run home run, the big swing in the game. Only three hits for Oklahoma State. But they're three outs away from an opening round win and a date with James Madison in the winner's circle tomorrow, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, ESPN 2. Sixth inning run for Georgia. And OSU will try to answer with the top of the lineup, starting with Kylie Naomi. Coming up in just two hours, 7 Eastern, 6 Central, our next game. Arizona, the 11 seed, the legendary Mike Candrea. Alabama, the number three seed, coached by Patrick Murphy. Likely to see Montana Fouts against one of the great offenses in the country. Jesse Harper, Deja Mulipola and company. And then 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central tonight, UCLA, Florida State. Big news from... This week, Megan Faremo did not make the trip for UCLA. Still considered day by day or day to day. And the injury is an injured right hand, and to this point, has not been specified how Faremo injured that right hand. Did not appear to be during UCLA Super Regionals, but she is not with the team at this point. 3-1 to Naomi. And that is seared into left field. Oh, base hit for Kylie Naomi. Second time Oklahoma State's had the leadoff runner aboard. Oh, I love this look. Haven't seen this yet today with the 42 cameras. It's laying out for now. Chambly. Have you seen this look yet today? I think I have. I've got a 42 camera bingo card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was about to say. Check. That. Factor after a home run will lay down a butt. She's very good at that. Leads Oklahoma State 13 sack bunts on the year. And she moves Naomi to second. The same home run hitter ends up squaring around and laying down a bunt. Runs at a premium in this game. Home run game, every run matters. Now the former Bulldog, Allison Fiebre. Yeah, I thought it was interesting talking to Allison Fiebre about the, how much she's in her legs, and she just feels like if she's not in her legs and just can't hit the inside pitch. She just doesn't ever really feel like she can get on time with anything that's might be a little bit off speed or a change up. That was a nasty change up there inside corner. Good spot by Mary Wilson Avant. But just looks so different than what you see out of Haley Busby in her stance. Bruce Fibri has 18 home runs. Busby the 19. Two totally different stances, but able to get a similar result. 
basketball. And this is the them side by side, Debris on the left, and then Busby on the excuse me, Busby on the left, Debris on the right. This is their stances. This is how they start. This is how Busby feels comfortable too with being more straight up, not being as in their legs, but as they straight out, they're able to still get even more. And a base hit up the middle for Feebly. And Oklahoma State matches the sixth inning run for Georgia. The two old teammates on a Georgia impact team, and it's Feebly defeating Avant with an impactful single in the sixth. 3 1 Cowgirls. Yep, she's gotten a couple of hits off of her former teammate. Able to cover the outer half of the plate by staying in her legs and driving it right back up the middle. That sacrifice bunt pays off to move Kylie Naomi into scoring position. And they grab that run right back. What an NCAA tournament this is shaping up to be for Allison Feebly. Nine runs batted in on ten hits. She'll leave the game momentarily for a pinch runner. It'll be Macy Kinconnet over at first. And you can see again how tall that Busby starts. She doesn't get very much into her legs at all. And she had a slower start to the season. And we asked her about that. She said, you know, me the season, they were trying to get me to be more in my legs at the beginning of my stance. And it just didn't work for me. So she went back to a bit straighter up. She called it more of a baseball type thing for her where she stands more straight up, holds her hands higher. And that is what works for her. That is what makes her feel confident, comfortable, and able to produce for this team. That's out of play, and we'll check in with Jalen. Hey guys, so the reason that Haley was saying her stance is more baseball y, if you want to use that term, her dad played for my hometown, the St. Louis Cardinals, back in the day. So she's been around baseball for her whole entire life. And uh, a player, Jalen, that has been compared by her coach to Vladimir Guerrero. And he compares her to Vlad Guerrero, he says, because sometimes she swings at everything. And there is an example, and strike three. Avant goes to that change up and it ends up bouncing in and Busby ends up almost on her back knee as she tries to just get her barrel down to that pitch. Sydney Pennington, ball one. Pair of ground outs to third for Pennington, who's in a monster NCAA tournament. Eight hits, three home runs. And she held up. Broke the record of Tiffany Mickelson during the regionals. There goes the pinch runner, can come and she's safe. Stolen base for Macy is her fourth of the year. And Khan goes in hard. It was a high throw. She's able to slide in underneath it. Oklahoma State, you want more. Two outs, runner in scoring position. You took that risk to get her there by calling the steal. Understanding, too, that Georgia is an offense that can score fast and they can score a lot. Well, there's that confidence in Mary Wilson Avan. That change up 54 miles per hour on a 3 1 pitch to get Pennington off balance. When, she's on, when she is on that pitch, she's able to throw in any count. A lot of confidence in that pitch. It's difficult to bear a lot. It's Look, deceptive. If, if George is going to make a run, Amanda, win or lose, Mary Wilson Avant's going to have to do almost everything in the circle. She is basically a one-woman pitching staff right now. 
it's been the other question mark for Georgia is who's their number two behind Mary Wilson Avant. They've won the big game. She's been in the circle. The veteran, the fifth year senior. And 28 out of 34 innings coming into the World Series for Georgia in the postseason. Trying to get through six today, still three and two on Pennington. Ninetieth pitch. So here's the thing, folks. There's a net right underneath us. We're a little bit low in the press box. And every time a foul ball comes on the net, it rolls all the way up to the back of the net, right around there. So this is why you should be you should be telestrating this. We'll circle the spot there. And every time Amanda thinks it's gonna come into the booth and hit us. We're safe, I swear. I mean, you didn't wear a face mask when you were pitching. You shouldn't be worried about a foul ball up here. No, the tricky part is you just can't see it. Like, you lose sight of the ball. It's not like you watch it roll up the whole way because there's, like, this little give to the net. You mm -hmm. can't see it. So then all of a sudden it pops up, and it looks like it's going to come in here. It's a bit of a surprise. It's an illusion, Michael, an illusion. Ten pitch to Pennington. And a strikeout for Amen will send us to the seventh. Georgia got a run. Oklahoma State got it back. Cowgirls need three outs. Look who's fired up the Cowgirls faithful. Mike Boynton Jr., head coach of the basketball team, men's team, getting down there and leading the Cowgirl cheers in between innings. Love it. Right down there in the thick of things, into it. Those fans and team fired up. It's only about an hour drive. Oklahoma City about an hour southwest of Stillwater. Down I-35 for most of it. Mike's going to be a happy guy if his team can get three more outs. Sydney Chambly with a loud foul ball. Strike one. Georgia's six, seven, eight hitters. Down by two against Carrie Eberly in the seventh. Good news for Georgia. They put pressure on the last couple of innings. Two hits in the fifth. Had a runner thrown out at the plate. Two hits and a run in the sixth. So they're starting to see Eberly better, but will it be too late? And Mary Wilson Avian has thrown well in this game. This has made a couple of mistakes. And that one inning back of the third, whenever there was the two run home run by Factor, was on a one and two pitch. The runner who got on or who was on, she got on on a one and two count singles. So a couple of mistakes in that inning, but it's been good ever since then. Chambly to first. Fabry can't pick it cleanly again. A second ball not handled cleanly by Febri at first. Maybe a third if you go back to the one-off for Glove in the fifth inning. It just seems like the game is moving too fast for her on defense. As soon as she is getting the ball, she just immediately tries to go to first base. She's just too ahead of herself. Tough hop, but got to be able to keep that in front with the out. Oklahoma State's third error of the game, Febri's second. And the tying run will bat Jaden Fields. Again, it's not like we've seen much fly ball power from Georgia in the game. All the hits have been singles, but there is still the opportunity here to tie this game with one swing. Team that's homered in all five games of the postseason coming in, 11 home runs in those five, and Fields has two. Another opportunity for a double play. Field swinging out of the zone on that one, helping Eberly out. She would have found herself in a 2-0 count if she wouldn't have swung at that. But that one not being a pitch that she can barrel up. There's ball two. 
mentioned that Georgia had lost seven straight going to the NCAA tournament. And whenever we asked their coaching staff of like, oh, what is the difference? What changed? Because you're undefeated in the NCAA tournament to get here. They had time to practice after the SEC tournament. They went one and out, lost that game, then went home and went to work on all sides of the ball. which might sound crazy. You're like, well, why isn't a college team practicing? It's because you, you play so much. You run out of time. You're traveling. You have schoolwork, finals. But they had extra time after the SEC tournament to be able to put in multiple days of practice more than they had all year. Fields foul tips it. Not caught, though, by Wright. And Jaden Fields stays alive. That would have been strike three if Wright had hung on. And Kenny Gajewski's coming out of the dugout. You could hear the foul tip whenever it happened live. Little bit of it. I can hear it. So Fields granted a second chance on 2 2. And she'll get another. Fields has grounded out and been hit by a pitch today. Tying run at the plate, nobody out, top seven. Up the middle and through, base hit Fields. Chambly will stick it second. Georgia has the tying runs on, on a rocket through the box from Jaden Fields. And she fought with the net at bat, fouled off some pitches, got a little bit of luck where she just barely foul tipped it and Reagan Wright dropped it. And now a couple of defensive mistakes by Oklahoma State has Georgia in business. Do you bunt here with the eight hitter Bordeaux? Yeah, I bunt it to Everly. Mm. Already almost threw one away in the fifth. Bordeaux, 192 hitter, Woo. not gonna show it. And it takes a strike. Have the nine hitter coming up in Armistead, so you would be bunning to get to the nine spot. Maybe that's why Lou Harris Champer doesn't want to do it. Not a very deep bench in terms of pinch hit options either for Georgia. Now Bordeaux squares to bunt. She bunts it foul. Gave her a strike to see what she was going to do with it. And then on the 0-1 square around and then all of a sudden you find yourself in an 0-2 count. Well, we saw Oklahoma State pick up a run last weekend on a two-strike bunt from Alexander, but Bordeaux only has one sacrifice on the year. It'd be certainly a gamble of some kind of bunter on 0-2. And she'll hit a ground ball to short. Naomi to third. Gets the lead out there. She's such a vacuum at shortstop. She's so fast twitch. Wants the ball to come to her every play because she has the confidence to know that she's going to make a play at any base, at any time, in any situation. And again, the advantage of having a ground ball pitcher with a force out is that your infield's ready for the ball and looking to get the lead runner. I know it's a very quick decision, but I'm just curious. Did you think she had a chance to turn two? Yeah, I, I, I think maybe she, she quite possibly could have. But I think in that situation, when you're up by two, go ahead and get that sure. runner at third. Now you still just have one runner in scoring position. Well, I guess she would have gotten the other runner at second base out of scoring position. But <laughs> she gets the ball. Yeah. Hey, 
did turn two in the first inning and in the fourth inning. 5 4 3 4 6 3. Naomi gets one out here. CJ Landrum's going to pinch run for Bordeaux at first. Here's the nine hitter, Ellie Armistead. Checked her swing, and she actually did not check, couldn't hold up. Strike one. Armistead a bit indecisive here and ends up going a little bit too far. The freshman in her first NCAA tournament this year, her first World Series game. And that one is foul for strike two. Good take again. I mean, if you're an Oklahoma State fan, you want that. But that's a great pitcher's pitch on an 0-2 count, a little bit off the plate. One of those pitches that's not a waste pitch. It's a competitive pitch. But it's a ball. One, two. Ball. And Everly goes even farther outside. Top of the lineup waiting for Georgia. Savannah Sykes, the leadoff hitter, due up. Fields and Landrum, the runners. On 2-2. Two -two. Ball three. Armistead. A hitter with a 289 on base percentage and only 10 walks has worked her way from 0 and 2 back into a full count. And on 3 2, she'll see another. I love the way that Georgia is just fighting in each of these at bats. Where do you want to see Everly go if you're Oklahoma State? Back to that bread and butter, drop ball in the outside corner. It's one of the toughest pitches to hit off of her. 3-2. Lined into left center field, and Armistead has split the gap. Fields is home, Landrum around third, now she'll hold. And Naomi throws behind her at third. Landrum holding at third. The tying run will remain 60 feet away on a run scoring double from Armistead. What an at bat by the freshman, Ellie Armistead. Was down 0-2, worked it to a full count, and then got a pitch that was over the heart of the plate, and she's looking to hit. Finds a gap, goes all the way to the wall. I thought Georgia might be able to score two on this, but Lou Harris Champer threw up the stop sign. Or at least I, and then last minute, throwing it up and then kind of seemed unsure, and then she got back, but Landrum just reading her coach well. Last minute, throwing up the stop sign and not running herself into an out with the top of the lineup coming up. Her second RBI of the tournament. And now a base hit could give Georgia the lead with second and third one out. And an all-staff meeting in the circle. John Barkfield, the pitching coach, joins Kenny Gajewski. That may be the at-bat of the very young World Series for Ellie Armistead, who missed her junior year of high school with a torn ACL. Last season, of course, canceled due to COVID. Just hadn't played a lot coming into college and has really grown into the role at shortstop. Supplying the Bulldogs with one of their biggest hits of 2021 and passing the baton to Savannah Sykes. Strike one. And let's remember, this inning started with an error by 
the Georgia transfer for Oklahoma State, Allison Fiebre. It, it, it hurts to go back to that, but that's the story. That's how this rally started for Georgia. There's a constant in a lot of Oklahoma State's losses this year, and it's a big number in the errors column. And that number is three today. Sykes 0 for 3. Ball. And takes ball one. Lost a game at Kansas with five errors. A game to Kansas City with three. Game to Wichita State with four. Trying to work around some shoddy defense today. Ball. Two and one for Sykes. Seems like Eberly has shown a few moments in this game where she just loses her command just a touch. And again, that at bat to Ellie Armistead, you saw that. She took some close pitches, but there were a couple that were well off the mark. No one warming in the Oklahoma State bullpen. This is all Eberly. Ball. Three and one for Sykes. One pitch away from loading the bases. Side corner. Like that take though by Savannah Sykes. That was a pitch that she was just going to hit right into the ground. Gets the call. Reagan Wright working to help her pitcher get a strike. Lou did not like that pitch call at all. 3 2. Savannah Sykes, the second Sykes sister to play in the World Series for Georgia. Sarah back in 2010, that Final Four team. Savannah on a 3-2, lines one foul. Really good two-strike approach going right now. When Georgia hitters are doing well, they really let the ball travel, work with a deep window. You can oftentimes tell that they're seeing the ball well when they're using the right side of the field. As the tying runner Landrum, Armistead behind her. One out in the seventh. Georgia trying to knock down the door. Sykes pops it up to second base, out number two. Love the pitch call to go back on the inside corner. She was just throwing her away, 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 and then ends up going inside for the out. And jams her up. One more out, and George is going to be thinking about that 3-1 strike call for a little while. Now Sydney Kuma. One for three today. Woo! And a first pitch strike. Good time to mix speeds. Only Georgia player to start all 56 games now this season. The sophomore from Fresno, Sidney Kuma. A ground ball to Pennington at third. And Oklahoma State survives. bracket at OKC. She induced 14 ground outs today, Carrie Everly. And the 14th to Sydney Pennington will set up a date between Oklahoma State and James Madison tomorrow night. Time now for our Capital One rewarding performance. Back in the third inning, 
giant factor. Beautiful home run, right back up over center field, and it's a big moment for Oklahoma State because they stole all of the momentum. They do. Can't be ignored that the game-winning RBI was off of Allison Fiebre's bat against her former team. And Oklahoma State works around the error by Fiebre against her former team in the seventh inning. Is this good or what? I mean, is this good softball? <laughs> it is. Start the World Series after a year off last year. Oklahoma State, James Madison tomorrow night. Georgia, Oklahoma, round three in an elimination game Saturday. Wow. So 7 Eastern, 6 Central coming up on ESPN. Our nightcap doubleheader starts with Arizona, Alabama, Florida State, UCLA to follow. For Jalen, Amanda, I'm Kevin. A lot more great softball to come later tonight on ESPN.